There you go. So good morning, everyone, and welcome from the IRM office in London. Uh, my name is Lucas Moraes. I am the student services manager here at the IRM. And today we are doing this webinar to have an overview of the certificates that the Institute of Risk Management provides, and also to answer some questions you might have um, about them. As you might know, the deadline was originally the 31st of May, but we have extended it for a month until the end of June. So if you're looking to enroll on the December 2022 exams, you still have uh, some time to do it. I'm just going to go through the agenda for today. So a big welcome to everyone and thanks for joining. Um, I will be joined by the fabulous Kate Boothroyd today. Kate is a, a certified fellow member of the IRM. She's an IRM trainer and a blended learning tutor, amongst other things. Um, after the introduction, introductions, I will be quickly giving you an overview of the IRM qualifications, talk briefly about the Institute, and uh, how the membership grades linked to the professional qualifications. Kate will then give you an overview of the International Certificate in Enterprise Risk Management Syllabus, as well as the blended learning workshops. And then we'll go through uh, Q&A sessions uh, about key information about the courses, what support do you get, uh, and how the examinations are set, as well as the process of enrolling. If you'd like to make a question, please raise your hand and then uh, talk. So just to make sure we don't talk all over each other, uh, there is a, a button for you to raise your hand somewhere in your taskbar. And if you have any sound problems, I'm afraid that's an issue with your connection. So there's unfortunately not much we can do to help. However, this session is being recorded. So you get access to the recording afterwards so you can catch up with it. So as I, as I said, my name is Lucas Moraes. Um, I am the Student Services Manager here at the IRM, and I have myself taking the International Certificate in Enterprise Risk Management. So I know it might be a little bit daunting. Uh, at the beginning, you might be wondering, how's this qualification going to help me progress in my career? How is it going to impact my life? Will I, will I have time to, um, to study and juggle that with a full-time job? So hopefully we'll be able to answer all these questions today. But first, uh, a little bit about the IRM and uh, how the professional qualifications work. The IRM was funded in 1986 as an awarding body. Uh, to meet the growing demand for a risk management qualification. And since then, we have been the leading uh, professional body for enterprise risk management worldwide. Our uh, qualifications are hugely beneficial because they are internationally recognized. Uh, they help you build your knowledge. So the qualifications are developed by a mix of academics and risk management practitioners. Uh, which gives you a good balance between the academic rigor and the practice, uh, professional practice. By joining the Institute of Risk Management, you're automatically joining a network of over 10,000 members. Uh, we have members all over 150, 150 countries. Uh, and by taking the professional qualifications, you're obviously contributing for your uh, career progress by building the skills and knowledge that you need. So these are the certificates that the Institute of Risk Management provides. We have the International Certificate in Enterprise Risk Management, uh, the International Certificate in Financial Services Risk Management, and then we have also two standalone qualifications, which are the Certificate in Digital Risk Management and the one in Supply Chain Risk Management. Those are short um, subject specific courses.
And this is uh, an overview of how the professional qualifications fit in with our membership grades. So usually people start uh, their journey with us or they get to know risk management through our IRM training courses. The training courses can take any, any time between one to five days uh, and they are just a starting point. Um, after that, you can move on to take one of the specialist certificates that I mentioned, either the digital risk management or the supply chain, as well as the international certificates. So neither of the certificates have an entry requirement. You can start uh, by enrolling in any of them. If you complete the international certificate, either in enterprise or financial services, we can refer to them as ERM or FS, it's shorter. Um, they can take between six to nine months to complete, uh, but we say a year because you, you actually have two exam sessions each year. And after completing them, you then awarded the first professional membership grade of the IRM, which is IRM CERT. And that means you are a certificate member. After completing that, you will then, if you want to progress within your studies, you can enroll for the international diploma in risk management. The diploma, it's a master's level qualification. Uh, there are additional four modules, which take three to five years to complete. And after you have completed the diploma, you are a graduate member of the IRM. Or if you have uh, three years of experience already, you can move on straight away to certified uh, membership. And then as you progress within your career, uh, after eight, uh, sorry, two years of uh, experience with risk management, you can then become a certified fellow as Kate it is a, a member, a certified fellow member of the Institute. And yeah, so I'll now hand over to Kate. Uh, she will give you an overview of the syllabus for the ERM certificate, as well as the blended learning uh, workshops. Thanks, Lucas. Um, nice little uh, segment into there. So, yeah, I have been, uh, I am a certified fellow of the Institute of Risk Management. And um, Lucas, I keep telling everybody I shouldn't do this, but um, I've been with the IRM for 30 years now. So I started doing my exams in 1992. Um, so I've been with the IRM for a long time. I was um, on the board for four years between 1999 and 2003. Um, and I was the chair of the Northwest England um, regional interest group. So, um, you know, when we're thinking about the support, we'll we'll talk about this a little bit later on. But there's additional support for you with the IRM, and one of those is is things like the specific interest groups, the regional interest groups as well. Um, and I uh, delivered training for the IRM. So the fundamentals risk management course is one of those training courses that leads you into the certificate. So I train on that. Um, and um, yeah, I've been involved in the diploma itself uh, as part of module three before then. So I'm still here and I still think it's very worthwhile. And, and I will say that the um, doing the exams made a massive difference to me. Uh, just give you a little bit of my fit, my background on it. I was in construction, so I was thinking about risk from a very, very siloed base. Um, when I was introduced to the Institute, Institute of Risk Management, it opened my eyes to how complex the world is and the interconnectedness of risks um, and also within your organizations that kind of interconnectedness across organizations and where risks can come from and stakeholder analysis all sorts of things so it was really really uh, useful for me to have that learning um, so um, yeah I, I, I encourage you to do the certificate um, and take yourself further if you need to anyway let me just talk to you a little bit about what the certificate is um, so the certificate is um, in two modules. Um, the first module gives you the breadth of risk management. So we're talking about the principles of risk and risk management, uh, where we take you back to some of the key concepts and definitions so that we're all working with a consistent point of view. Then we have a look at the risk management standards. Um, and this is very important because in your organisation, you might be um, regulated, heavily regulated. So if I'm thinking of financial services, you know, there are things that you have to do. Um, in terms of risk management. Um, if you work for the UK uh, uh, government, you might have to follow things like the Orange Book, 
If you are looking at it from the US perspective, you might be following the uh, COSO ERM framework. So we have a look at all of that, but then we, we kind of sent it onto the ISO 31000, which is the international standard on risk management. Um, and the rest of the, at least this module is, is based around that to give us a framework um, or a hanger almost to hang the risk management uh, process from. That leads us nicely into thinking about enterprise risk management. So, so what does enterprise risk management look like? But well, it's across the organization. I've been working with organizations at the moment where they think it's at the top level. And enterprise risk management is looking across an organization at all levels within an organization. So it's having a recognition of, of what that is, as opposed to um, what might be termed as traditional risk management, where it's done in different silos within an organization. So we have a look there at things like the principles of risk management, what does good risk management look like? We also have a look at the framework for risk management. So how do you match risk management to your organization? Um, you know, the structure of the organization, what's the purpose of risk management for the organization, the tone from the top, and then all of the things that you need to help risk management work for you. So the, what we call the protocols, the, the procedures, the documents, the systems, et cetera, that support you. Then and only then do we actually go into the full process. So we start to think about the process and we start with risk assessment um, and the introduction and in, in identification of risk. But that really starts this, the journey of risk management from the context, the scope um, and the criteria. So we're thinking about what's going on in the world around us now that makes us think risks might happen and understanding what the objectives are. So how much does risk matter to you? before we then go into the risk identification piece. So that, that basis is very important to start from. Then we think about, well, you know, what are the risks that we face facing? So there's different tools and techniques relating to risk identification. Then we move into the analysis and evaluation and we say, okay, as part of risk assessment, um, how big are the risks that we're facing? So we analyze those and we're using uh, the traditional approach of likelihood and impact. And then we say, OK, so if I have some big risks, do I need to do anything more to bring them back into my risk appetite? So we touch very briefly onto risk appetite in this area to say some risks we can accept, even though it might be a high level of risk. Other risks, we need to manage them down to a more acceptable level. And then we finish off the, um, the process by thinking about risk response and treatment. But there's more than that in there because... Um, we go through uh, what the kind of different responses are for both threats and opportunities because we are following ISO 31000. So there's an upside and downside in terms of risk. Um, and we take it down to the level of, of um, also thinking about different risk treatment types as well. So what are the preventative controls or corrective controls we have in there, um, as well as thinking about detective and, and directive. So there are different types of response strategies, but we also then say, OK, once we've decided we're going to do something, how do we monitor, review and make sure that we are looking at that? Um, and we do touch into different risk uh, treatment options or trans, uh, treatment options of, of insurance, transfer insurance, and then also business continuity planning. So we take it into a little bit of depth in certain areas. So that gives us the principles of risk and risk management, the breadth of risk management. And then in module two, we go into the depth of um, risk management. So we start to take those principles we've learned in module one and we start to apply them. So we think about, well, okay, what does risk management look like in a global business environment, taking account of the geographies that you might be working in, the, the industries that you might be working in, uh, the regulatory requirements that you might have. So we're trying to apply it to uh, different situations so that adds value to you. Then we think a little bit more deeply about the risk strategy in the framework. So remember, we were talking about um, how we apply risk management to an organization to match the way the organizations run. You know, you might have a hierarchical structure or a matrix structure. Uh, you might be coming from um, a um, charity point of view or a governmental point of view or from a private sector point of view. Um, we then think about how we then, if that's what we want to do, how do we make that work through the framework? Then we come out of that a little bit to think about, OK, that's OK saying that, but how do we apply that when we think about an organization's risk culture? And then um, we also need to think about more detail then of the appetite and tolerance and how that helps us make decisions in terms of managing our risks. Then we come a little bit wider again to think about corporate governance um, and risk management and, and how they relate to each other. 
um, because there are requirements. It doesn't matter whether you're in the UK or in other, in other countries, but we need to be thinking about corporate governance and the um, requirements of not just privately listed companies, but also the way that they influence the way that other organisations are asked to, to run their business and to think about risk leading us nicely into the risk assurance and reporting. So, you know, how do we give assurance to um, managers within the organization, to the board of an organization, to external stakeholders to an organization that risk manage, risk is being, or risk management is being implemented effectively and risks are being managed effectively. Because at the end of the day, you need to make sure the organization is being, uh, is going to survive and be resilient. So we bring in a little bit of that resilience piece there. Before we finish off, um, and the last section um, in this module is quite short because we think about case studies and we think about emerging risks and we think about the, the future of risk management in here. Um, I will say that the case studies actually, in particularly in, in module two, are interwoven into the whole of that module. So we're thinking about how we apply risk management in the real world there. So that's what the two modules look like in terms of... Um, uh, in terms of the uh, certificate. Now, then, when we're thinking about the, doing the certificates, this is distance learning. So you're learning in your own place, at your own pace, in your own space. I can't think of any others that rhyme with that at the moment, um, Lucas. Um, but what we're trying to say is, you know, you have the ability to do this without sitting face to face um, in, in lecture rooms or tutorials and things like that which is great for a lot of people and it's been fabulous for people over the last two or three years because of the situation we've been facing. However, some students do struggle a little bit with that and they might need some more um, hands-on um, support. So what the RM does offer as an addition to uh, the support that you get um, through the distance learning is blended learning workshops. And these are face-to-face, -face, uh, but I will caveat that if there's difference between face-to-face -face physically um, over the last three years we've been offering this face-to-face -face online um, which has been very very helpful where we have the international student cohort um, and what this is is um, four uh, days across three different sessions so and, and we match this in terms of the way that um, the study should be set out or your study um, plan should be set up prior to doing the exams so um, after about, so if we are joining now for the December exams, uh, we're already doing the blended learning, by the way. If we think about June 2022, say, um, not that I'm asking you to wait that long, but if we think about that, you can apply from September this year for the June exams next year. But in January next year, we would have the first of the blended learning sessions and we'd have workshop one, which is induction. And in that it's one day. And what we do is we have two trainers, um, or two tutors, and we take you through the, the um, both of the units, so you kind of get a geography of um, the modules one and module two, so not units, but module one and module two and the units within those. And then we um, help you plan and think about how you study um, and the uh, support that you have to study, a little bit about what to expect in the exams and some messages from the IRM and the module coaches, so some guidance. And we take you through the um, um, Moodle is the online learning, uh, the virtual learning environment that uh, the IRM use. So we introduce you to that if you haven't had a chance to get into there yet and just give you a little navigation of where you can find things. There is other support to do that if you're distance learning, by the way. But we take you through and it's a navigation really through the learning materials, um, uh, the learning environment and also um, the, uh, the two modules. Then later on, so mid-program means between the introduction before your exams, we actually then take you through. In two days, we go through module one and day one, module two and day two, and we unpack the modules unit by unit. And we, what we do is we pull out areas that we think that you might not recognize or you might struggle with, or when we've read through everything and we've um, taken on board the essential reading, we've maybe found some trick, tricky areas that we think that you need some more support on. So we pull out those and we map against the learning objectives, against the, the study information in, in Moodle um, and the essential reading. And we direct you to different areas um, that you might find support there. So we review each of the units as we go through there, but we also introduce you to some practice exam questions. Um, so um, I know I'm going to steal a bit of thunder from Lucas here, but both exact, both um, units, modules 
are examined by multiple choice questions. Um, and so we start to pepper in some um, exam questions for you just to get you introduced to the style of the questions. These have all been checked by the qualifications team for relevance and the, uh, the level of detail that's required. That then leads us quite nicely into, and it's usually about a month, a month and a half before the exams, we have a revision session. And in the revision session, we, um, well, before the revision session, you're actually um, able to have a go at a mock exam paper. Not the mock exam papers that are available to you in the virtual learning environment. This is an additional set of exam questions. Um, and there are exam questions for both modules one and module two. And we've set it up in a way that you do online, similar to the way that you'll actually do them um, from the RM's formal examination through Pearson View. And you get to do two half quest half half papers basically. Um, then we, what we do during the workshop is we actually go through those exam questions, we explain to you why they were set up that way, we explain the different types of questions that you're facing and, and we try to tease through how best to approach those questions. And then we spend some time getting you to go through all the areas that you might have struggled with or things that you feel okay with, and then the majority of the afternoon we then go through and say okay, these are the areas you're struggling with, let's go through those again. So this is really revision for where is at uh, sorry workshop for whereas workshops one two and three have been us um kind of helping you and teaching you revision four is really for you as students and we help you go through those um the questions and practicing them and doing that that q a in there um we found that students find this very valuable. Uh, we have a very good success rate with students that go through, Lucas is nodding because he's done this himself. <laughs> um, and you get access to at least two of the tutors. Um, we've been through all of the material. We've set exams ourselves. By the way, we have no idea what the actual exam bank or bank of questions uh, that the IRM have. We're not allowed to go anywhere near them. So we can, we're not going to tell you what, what exams to look at, but we've certainly written exams which are in the same style. So we found that students really like that. And afterwards, you also have another bank of questions um, as blended learning students um, that you will have access to and you can practice with as many times as you like. So there is value in doing the blended learning. That doesn't mean to say if you don't do the blended learning, you won't get a lot of support through the uh, the IRM because there are sample questions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and I'm going to let, um, well, as part of the QA, we're going to go through some of those um, those areas of support anyway, Lucas, aren't we? Yes, we will. Thank you very much, Kate. That was um, great. Um, before we go on to the Q and A, there is a question from Teng Tengis about how much of the curriculum is focused on banking. And I don't think that's covered in the next slide. So I'll just go back to the modules of uh, overview, um, because I know that the International Certificate in ERM covers ERM, and then the International Certificate in Financial Services covers pretty much everything that uh, the ERM does, but also some specific regulations about the banking and insurance industry. So would you mind uh, just giving us a little bit more detail about that? Yeah, sorry. Okay, so yes, this is the Enterprise, uh, the enterprise Risk Management Certificate. The FS um, certificate um, does take you through, it, it's from a banking and an insurance background. So it does focus on things like Basel, uh, the Basel Accord, um, Basel 2 and 3 and Solvency 2 in there. So Basel is banking, Solvency 2 is um, insurance. But remember, this is risk management. So it's not going to tell you how to how to completely com uh, look at all three pillars for both Basel and Solvency but it will take you through the, uh, the risk management requirements of that. Um, so it does cover things like cre credit liquidity, uh, know your customer, AML, um, and um, it also takes you through some of the requirements um, in terms of regulatory reporting um, through that. But it is from a risk management point of view. It's not teaching you how to uh, you know, be a banker <laughs> or be ins insurer. It looks at the risk management uh, relationship to that. So I hope that helps um, with that question. Um, but I will say that we do find quite a few um, people in the FS, so the financial services sector, actually take the ERM approach. Or also, by the way, it does cover things like operational risk management as well um, in there from a banking point of view. 
Um, I hope that helps with that answering that question for you. Certainly does. Thank you, Kate. And now just uh, answering Carrie and Aubrey um, about the blended learning registration. So the blended learning workshops, they are charged separately and you have to enroll uh, for them separately as well. You can enroll for the four workshops or you can pick which ones you'd like to enroll for. Um, uh, we will send out um, a follow-up message so I can send you more information about the registration for the blended learning workshops in there. Um, I would say, um, Lucas, workshops two and three come together as a package. Ah, okay. It's what it's the induction, um, the workshop two and three come as one, and then we have um, the revision. I think that's the way it's that, I mean, it's set up like that in the, in the uh, columns there. So I think that's the way that the uh, enrollment would be. Amazing. So now on to the Q and A and each slide has uh, some information about a specific part of the enrollment journey of the course. So if, if we don't answer your questions uh, right away, it's because they are coming on uh, a further slide. And feel free to also switch on your camera and your mic if you would like to, to make a question. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the, on the chat box. Um, but yeah, firstly, some key information about the course. Um, like I said before, there are no prior entry requirements for any of the certificates, so anyone can uh, enroll if they wish to do so. We say the course takes six to nine months to be completed, and that will depend on when you have enrolled. So uh, the enrollment is open until the end of the month for the December exams, which means you'll have the shortest amount of time to, <laughs> to get through the two modules. Um, this enrollment has been open since February, hence why we say nine months, six to nine months, and that depends so solely on when you have enrolled. Each of the two modules that Kate has uh, explained takes roughly 180 to 200 hours to complete. That depends on your approach to learning and the way you, you assimilate knowledge. Uh, I... Both modules are Sorry. taking... Sorry. Sorry, Lucas, I just wanted to jump in there. Um, that 180 to 200 hours is your... That takes account of you reading the essential reading that's relevant and you are pointed to which bits are relevant out of the book that's available and the additional information that, that's there to support you. The um, activities that you are, have in, in the virtual learning environment in Moodle that just get you to think about what you've learned. Um, doing specimen questions that are in there, um, you know, going on the discussion forum to talk about it, um, any revision that you're doing. So it's not you reading for 180 hours to 200 hours information. It's you planning time in, it's you taking time out to do different activities. It's, there's lots of different things in that, those hours. Um, pe some people take less, some people take more. Um, but what this is, is showing you is 180 to 200 hours of, of per module, per module ties in with the fact that these are the first two modules that if you decide to go further take you through to the full diploma which is a master's equivalent diploma so this is um, a rigorous academic qualification that you're getting here um, so it's not just you doing 30 hours and doing some exams you know it needs um, it needs uh, that that rigor going into it exactly and uh, both modules they are taking at the same time. So if you enroll for the December exams, it means that you will be taking both exams in December. Um, and the learning is through distance learning as we have explained. So the way it works is once you complete your enrollment, you get access to our vir virtual learning environment, which is a platform on Moodle. And all of the learning materials are available there. Um, the unit guides, the self-assessment questions, the essential readings, uh, everything you need is available there. We'll get through the, um, the support available to students in a moment as well. Moment and as then, well. as we have explained, uh, there are the option for blended learning additional workshops. Um, 
Uh, the Kunle is asking about the pricing of the course and if there are any discount for students from Africa. So the price of this course at the moment is £2,095 and that's the standard rate. So that's if you're not an IRM member and you're just uh, joining now. If you are an IRM member, you get affiliate um, affiliate discount, which uh, then takes the course to 180, uh, 1,895 pounds. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and then we also give discounts for uh, low GDP countries. And uh, uh, some, some countries in Africa are included in the low GDP list. I'm happy to share the list of low GDP countries with everyone that has attended afterwards. And the fee for, for the students from low GDP countries is £1,780. Thanks. So now we move on to the support provided to students. Um, and that's what the course fee, which I just mentioned, uh, includes. So as I said, it includes access to uh, an online learning environment which is uh, the VLE virtual learning environment platform with all the materials you have um, and the student handbook, which is your, your guide through the course, essentially. The student handbook has all the six units for each module, some self-assessment questions, uh, links to the essential readings. In the course, in the virtual learning environment, sorry, you also get access to the discussion forum the discussion forum is a really, really useful uh, way of you to connect with other students that are taking the course at the same time as you are. You are free to post any questions you might have or raise uh, discussions there. And also is a place that where you can organize uh, your own study groups. We highly encourage students to set up their, their learning uh, and study groups. We have seen that this has been successful in previous sessions. And also in the discussion forum, you have access to a module coach. The module coach is a risk management practitioner and they are there to answer any subject related questions that you might have uh, when it comes to the course or even if you're applying anything that you, you've learned in your, in your organization or uh, at work, you can raise a discussion there and uh, the discussion, uh, the module coach will surely uh, engage with you. There are revision webinars, not as in-depth as the blended learning workshops, I'm afraid, but the course includes three webinars, uh, an induction or introductory video where the module coach goes through all of the units of the module and gives you a little bit of advice on how to approach the studies. Then you have a mid-program webinar, which is a, a live broadcast, and that's where the module coach goes through the subject in, um, a little bit more in depth about the, the units itself. And a revision webinar, which gives you some uh, exam preparation techniques, uh, as well as uh, an overview of the revision of the units in each module. In the virtual learning environment, you also have access to sample exam questions. Uh, each module has a sample paper with 60 questions, which is exactly the amount of questions that you will have on your exam. Uh, the IRM also has an online uh, resource center on the website where you have lots of uh, useful information there and also, some, some of the things that are available in the online resource center are part of your essential reading. We have, uh, for instance, a risk appetite, uh, executive summary, uh, risk tolerance, risk culture. So all of the papers that our special, special interest groups produce are available in the online resource center. There you go, Kate is just showing the risk culture uh, <laughs> executive summary. And finally, uh, you, you have a dedicated student support team, which I'm proud to manage. Uh, we will be running 
a first uh, induction week, and that's breaking news for everyone. We will be running a, a student support induction week because we have received a lot of queries about um, students not being able to get familiar with the, with the virtual learning environment platform. And so we will do uh, an induction week on the 13th to 14th of July, just to show the platform to students and hopefully get them familiar with it. Um, and if you have any queries, we aim to re respond to them within less than 24 hours. So that's a huge part of the benefits you get as well. And now moving on to the examination. So once you've gone through all of your studies, um, you will then be ready to see the exams. Like I said, there are two exams, one for each module. Our exams are computer-based and you do have to attend a Pearson View Examination Center to sit them. Uh, but the, the Pearson, Pearson View has an extensive amount of uh, test centers around the world. So wherever you are, you will be able to, to book a test center near you. And each exam lasts for 90 minutes and is formed of 60 multiple choice questions. And for the specialist certificates, so the digital risk management and supply chain, you would only have one exam. Uh, for the ERM and FS, you would have two exams, one of the principles and one of the practice of risk management. The results for your exams are released six weeks after the exam, after the last exam of the session. So, for example, for the students who start the exam this June, they will get the results in August. And Finally, let's have a look at the enrollment journey. So like I said, the enrollment deadline has been extended until the end of the month. So if you are looking to see the examinations in December, you can enroll by the 30th of June. And you can enroll online, uh, going to the irm.org slash forward qualifications or you can request a manual application form. I will have the email of the student support team at the end of the presentation available for you. Once you have confirmed your enrollment, you can start studying by distance learning. And by confirming your enrollment, I mean you must apply and uh, also pay for the enrollment fees up front. And by, by paying for the fees, you are confirming your enrollment. The next stage after finishing the studies is then take the examinations, uh, which will take place in November, last week of November and first week of December uh, 2022. And then the results for that session will be announced in January 2023, providing that you pass both modules if you are taking the international certificates in ERM and FS, you are then admitted to the professional membership level certificate and you are an IRM cert, which means you can use the post nominals IRM cert after your name. Now, there are two questions here from John and uh, I think Kate, Kate, you've answered uh, John's question. So thank you for that. And sorry, sorry Lucas, can I just, um, so the, the exams, they include obviously it's 90 minutes to do 60 questions and the questions are split out into some multiple choice questions of things like you get you get given a scenario and you have to choose between a b and c um, or you get a scenario and some options and the options give you a chance to choose a b and c <laughs> so there are different types of questions in there um trying to get to the depth of the knowledge that we want you to to be thinking about so it's not just regurgitating um straight from the text there are scenarios set out in a lot of the questions particularly in module two just to get to the depth of your knowledge in there so um yeah it's um it, it's not just a case of doing one question every 90 seconds you you know you have to kind of think about the scenarios for each of those questions and there's some case studies as well so um but moodle and the blended learning will also support you in doing those 
Right. There was Thanks. another question before then, I think, um, from John as well, um, Lucas, which kind of comes onto this slide. Is there a limited time frame for completion? Is ah, it yes, thank you. So the students have a two years time limit to complete the qualification uh, from the time they receive their enrollment confirmation, uh, which gives them three exam sessions, three consecutive exam sessions uh, to, to complete the course. So let's say, for example, that you are very keen to see the exams in December and you enroll for the exams in, in December. However, something happens and you are not able to see the, the exams. You can retake, you have another two opportunities to retake your exams in the two following uh, consecutive exam sessions. The RM runs two sessions each year, one in June and one in November, December. So if you enroll for November to December 22, your timeline to complete the course would be November 22, June 23, November, December 23. So that's the time limit that students have to complete the qualification, two years from enrolling. And the same goes for the certificates in supply chain and digital risk management, two years within uh, three exam sessions. Um, can I just say, if you if you decide uh, to do the exams and then in December just go, oh, I don't want to take them now because I'm not ready. Um, our suggestion is you take them because you've used one of your chances. Um, and when you do have to, re even if you don't sit it, you have to resit if that makes sense. And there's, there is a, a fee for the administration to resit. So um, our, our advice is always, if you get to December and just go, oh, I haven't had a chance to revise everything, have a go. Okay. And Thank I know you. that I've just said that the exam questions are trying to get into the depth of your knowledge. It is still multiple choice. So go for it. And at least you'll have a chance to figure out what it's like to do the exam. <laughs> the exam. Now, you know, unless there's something absolutely on the day, you simply can't get there or something happens like that. Um, yeah, but always, always try and have a go. You never know. Yeah, that's some excellent advice, Kate. Also, because um, we don't provide past exam papers to students. So if you don't see the exam, you will not have any idea of what the exam looks like other than the questions that you have available in the, in the virtual learning environment. So... I always ask the students if they call or they email um, asking to defer their exams or to, to reschedule it for the following session. So can you attend the exam or are you just not able to attend the exam? And if the answer is I can, but I just don't feel prepared, my advice is always the same. Please see the exam because you will lose one attempt. And if you see the exam, at least you'll be better prepared for the second time. Mm. Um, another question on here is uh, and getting an affiliate discount for the CIOB. So as a chartered, so it's a chartered institute of builders. Now, then I don't know whether we have any exemptions because that's a different thing. But affiliate means you're affiliated to the IRM, doesn't it? Luke? Yeah. So I don't think you would get affiliate discount if you're a member of other organization, I'm afraid. No, the affiliate uh, is because you're a member, an affiliated member of the Institute of Risk Management. So you get you. You're already a member, so you get a discount there. Exactly. And also, if you are not a, uh, not a member of the IRM and you are intending to enroll as a student, you get two years of free uh, student membership. So not necessarily the affiliate discount is, advan is an advantage for you. And whilst we are touching in the exemptions uh, subject, Lisa has asked, has asked at the beginning of the presentation, if uh, by having an ACII qualification, um, if that gives exemptions for the international diploma. Uh, now, I know that it doesn't give you standard exemptions for the diploma. However, there are two other uh, routes through exemptions which are non-standard and uh, APL, which is accreditation of prior learning. And through these two routes, um, we have application forms on our website if you visit the diploma page, but basically you have to compare the syllabus of the qualifications that you have completed and make sure that they are at least 80% equivalent to the syllabus of the international diploma. 
and all the guidance for application is there as well. That's great. Okay, so Paul has given us a question about um, distance learning is difficult. Um, so is it the actual learning, Paula, or is it doing the exams or both? So you can come off mute if you want to, or if you just put it into chat. Um, because during the exams, they do give you the ability. You, 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 oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, don't worry. Do you just... I oh, you're I'm that now. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, yeah, technical difficulties, user error. Um, so for me, it's the discipline of sitting down and studying. I did ask if there was classroom sessions available, but I think that's been scrapped obviously due to COVID um, because I find if I'm forced in a classroom, I'm there and I can um, pay attention much more effectively. Whereas if I'm sitting in front of a, a laptop, I um, it's just, I find that incredibly hard. I just don't have the, the self-discipline. Yeah. So, um, so I was just wondering, you know, is there any sort of help or support or guidance to help with sort of distance learning um, in, in terms of just being able to get stuff to yeah. sink in? And Well, we have the blended learning, which is um, at the moment it isn't physically face to face, Paula, but it is the online version. And we, um, I'm one of the tutors for that. And we're quite good at bringing people in and engaging them. Um, Lucas, they're not as boring as it sounds, are they? No, the blended <laughs> learning <laughs> workshops are great for me, especially because I, I didn't have any experience with risk management and English is not my first language. So I found the blended learning workshops extremely helpful and not only on the day itself, but also the, the things you take from the blended learning workshops and then how you apply that to your approach to studies and the tutors give you, for, for example, the, they tell you to do a wall of learning. So by the end of the six months of studying, my room was looking like an FBI <laughs> <laughs> um, place. So it's definitely, if, if you struggle with uh, distance learning, the blended learning workshops are definitely the way to go. Okay, lovely. I mean, I did do my certificate in internal audit, but um, you know, they were they were classroom based, mm -hmm. um, and I'm just very nervous yeah. about then, doing a yeah. um, a distance qualification when I know my attention to study is very poor. Don't, don't worry, Paula, you're not the only one, I must say, about that as well. So, um, yes, yeah, so the, we give lots of um, hints and tips of things that you can do to try and make the learning a little bit easier for you. It, it, planning is fine, but keeping to plans is a different matter altogether. Exactly, but, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But just diff different hints and tips of the way to capture the information, where to put it. So we've got loads of extra bits in the blended learning to support you with that. Um, but, thank you. Yeah, the other thing is, um, you know, having um, with the blended learning too, but also outside of that, it's it's making kind of um, WhatsApp groups with other students um, or going through the discussion forum to find the other students as well. So don't ever feel you're on your own, but also access to the module coaches to explain things in different ways. Yes. Um, and then as blended learning, you have you still have additional access to the tutors and you know we're happy uh, in fact we have blended learning students Lucas we have our own whatsapp group with the with the students there so they can come and ask us questions at different times and when oh, you that go, sounds oh, good yeah when you go oh for goodness sake <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and how can I you know so just it there is additional it costs a little bit more to do the blended learning but some people find that that's the only way that they can do it so uh, I'd be the same as you Paul and, and you know I don't actually have a, a registered disability or anything but I my studying can be appalling at the best of times so uh, it's not just you. Oh lovely yeah. thank you thank you for that. And the final thing I will say I think that goes for everyone if they're doing blended learning or not the from my experience the best approach to this course is to study little and often rather than leaving everything for the last minute as intimidated as, as intimidating as it might be to, to start with once you get familiar with uh, the way the unit guides work and the structure of the course it gets a lot easier and also if you are not uh, if you're new to risk management the, 
for, I, I found the first two to three units the harder and then I got the concepts down and then I was able to apply them so it was it, it just gets easier and easier and better and better as you progress through the course. I, I think also whether you're doing blended learning or not having that either the blended learning session or the or the the video the webinar at the beginning the induction then having the mid program and then having the revision uh, support for both those who are doing blended learning or not just set some milestones for you or stage gates you know where should i be right I should be starting around about now if i haven't already where should i be now so it just it it also gives you that kind of push and that reminder um as to where you you should or could be at those different stages so Amazing. Um, so I'm just conscious about the time and just mentioning if you're not able to enroll for the December exams or if you think that you won't have sufficient time to study between now and the end of the year. As I said, we have two exam sessions each year, so you can get in touch with us around September to enroll for the June 2023 examinations. Um, and finally, this is our contact details. Uh, you can visit our website. There's plenty more information there. We have a frequent, frequently asked questions page there for the qualifications, um, or you can email the student support team via studentqueries at drm.org, or give us a ring. This is um, the direct number for the student support team. And thank you very much for everyone to join. Thank you. Um, if you have any more questions, of course, please ask, um, as, as uh, Lucas says. Oh, one new message. OK, brilliant. I think um, that's a wrap up then. That's a wrap then. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye bye. Bye.